Hello, hello. Yo, Ashley, what's going on? What, nothing much, how are you? Good, 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 good. Hey, Your hair looks really good. Thank you, I'm glad to be on. <laughs> All right, please introduce us to yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name is Isaac Mashman. I'm 20 years old. I'm an entrepreneur. I run a company called Mashman Ventures, and I specialize in working with people to build up their personal brands. Um, aside from the business ventures, I mean, okay, this is, this is super broad based. So what do you want me to talk about? So how did you get started with your company? Okay. Um, well, honestly, it's, it's more how did I get started with entrepreneurship? Um, I first got involved with business when I was literally in high school. Uh, it was 2017, and I come from a single parent home. Like my mom was a single mom um, up until the point she got remarried. And, uh, you know, I watched her struggle most of my childhood, and I saw her just be faced with financial difficulty, the lack of time, all those different things. And so I viewed entrepreneurship almost as the uh, solution to all of my problems. I found it as mm -hmm. like my, my therapy and the solution. And uh, over the past couple of years, I got into a variety of different businesses. I got involved with network marketing. I got involved with uh, wanting to do a record label. I managed an artist for a time, just a whole bunch of different things. And then I realized uh, beginning of this year, well, a couple months into the year that I had more of a passion for building brands than I did for building businesses. It's like, it, it's fun to build a business, but I also really loved building up a name for myself. And so I decided to launch my company, Mashman Ventures and uh, got everything legally filed and all that fun stuff in April. And I've been working with people ever since. What made you want to start right away out of high school as opposed to going to college? Well, you know, I was raised to get good grades and go to school, like the stereotypical mm -hmm. path that everyone's raised on. And I'm not one of those entrepreneurs who can say that I had D's and F's. Like I was straight A student most of my life. Um, I graduated with like a 4.4 weighted GPA. Like it was literally everything was go to school, get a scholarship. And I could have taken the SAT one more time and got a full ride scholarship. And I'm not saying that to like brag, but I'm just saying that to like show like I literally had everything set to go. And uh, I was like, you know, I saw these 20 year olds making 10,000 a month and I kind of got enamored by the flashy things. I was like, OK, everybody's kind of, you know, flexing their cars, they're flexing the nice watches and the nice things. And, and somebody who was going to school with ten dollar Walmart shoes and I was like, OK, I like that. Um, and I realized, you know, it's not about the money, but it, it's just the fact that there were possibilities because up until that point, the only two options that were really there were go to college or go into the military. And I didn't want to go mm -hmm. into the military, um, partly because I don't like taking, taking orders. And so that kind of goes in and translates into why I like business because I can be my own boss. Um, and so it's just been a roller coaster ever since. Nice. Nice. Okay. You said that you came from a humble family. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Uh, good question. Um, my grandfather was a carpenter. You know, I, I remember getting like, up in the... Like, like Joseph? Not... Joseph was a carpenter. No, no, Jesus was a carpenter. Joseph was a carpenter. <laughs> yeah, they, they both were, Joseph and Jesus. Um, but no, my grandfather would make... He worked in a cabinet shop. And I remember getting up 5.30 in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning, because my mom would work so much. My grandmother raised me a lot of my life just because my mom was always working. Um, and I remember going six o'clock in the morning, dropping my grandfather off at a cabinet shop across town, um, you know, and just kind of being raised. Never really had a lot of money. Um, my mom was a brilliant woman, you know, similar to me. She was she went to school to get good grades. But instead of going to college herself, she decided to stay back for family and go to college. Um, but she was working, you know, fast food growing up even. Um, and for being brilliant, it's like I feel like she almost lacked that confidence to go into a position that she really wanted to be in. Um, and because of that, I really didn't see her a lot. Um, you know, nobody in my family ever made past probably fifty thousand um, mm dollars. -hmm. You know, and that might seem like a lot. It's like I don't come from the lowest of low when it comes to poverty and all that. But it got to the point as I got older to where, you know, like I remember seeing like my grandparents struggle when it comes to finances. You know, and then my grandfather had health issues, and you know, I, I remember one point there was even like the the rafters in the ceiling were starting to come down. And me seeing this, I'm like, money is literally the solution to all of this. Uh, literally, yeah. like it could solve all of these issues. Um, so that's kind of what I mean by humble. You know, nothing too flashy, nothing too like, you know, we went on one, one or two vacations um, my entire childhood. It's kind of crazy to think about, um, but nothing too, too crazy. If you could give something to your parents, now what would it be? Advice. <laughs> Honestly, um, 
you know, and that, that sounds super, that sounds almost sad to say, but I think it would be advice because I feel like a lot of people are afraid to take risks and a lot of people are afraid to really go after what it is they want or they listen to other people's opinions. And I've been fortunate, you know, I don't have the best relationship as of, as of now. I might look back on this interview five years from now and I might have a fantastic relationship, but the one, you know, entrepreneurship and running a business and, and going and, and taking the untraditional route when everybody in your life wants you to take the traditional route can cause conflict. It can cause tension. It can cause issues. And it oh, caused man. a lot of them. Um, and there are already enough growing up, you know. Um, but it would honestly be, be advice because I've always been the, you, you tell me to go left, I'm going to go right just to see what happens because I like to learn. I like to, I'm curious. I want to see what happens. Um, and it would be, you know, hey, if you see something in your life that you want changed, you have the ability to change it. Mm, that's deep. Okay. This is a three-part question. Okay. And if you, if you get one, forget one of them, I'll remember. Okay. okay. Yeah. So first question is, what is Brandon? Brandon? Why am I thinking? Who is Brandon? That's not the question. That's not the question. All right. The first question is, what is branding? Mm -hmm. The second question is, what is personal branding? And the third question is, why is any of that important? Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's a fantastic question. Um, branding kind of goes underneath the umbrella of marketing. A lot of people think that branding is the same thing as marketing. I like to think of the two as brother and sister. Branding is who you are or what the product, what the company, what the service is. And then marketing is how do you get that product, service, or thing out to the masses. It's like, how do you scale? How do you grow? I view branding as the identity. So it's, it, you know, it's not just a logo. Branding is much more than a logo. Some people argue and say that a logo isn't a part of your brand, but it is, it goes into it. You know, does that logo have meaning? Does that logo have specific colors? You know, certain colors trigger different psychological responses. Blue is super, you know, it, it's calming. Red is something that takes action. Um, green relates to money or it relates to growth. Uh, you know, and then branding when it comes to the characteristics. So if you think about Apple, right, I mentioned Apple and you immediately thought of the logo. You, you thought of the company, see that Apple with the bite taken out. You think of uh, upscale products, you, you kind of have luxury. You think of Louis Vuitton. They have a specific uh, elegance that comes with, the, with that name whenever I mention it because of their brand, because they've established it. You think of their logo. So that is what it is. You know, I remember a couple of weeks ago on Facebook, if you ever follow my content, you'll see that I always use my signature. I'll do like that, that the little I am swoosh. Mm -hmm. And I had somebody, he's like, why do you do that? He's like, you, you look kind of pretentious doing that. And I'm like, it's all about the branding. And I was like, I literally branded myself in such a way to where now you know that that is my signature. You know that yeah. is correlated to me. So that is successful branding. Now, personal branding is you. And it's not something saying that like, you know, you're a model, you're an actor, you're a rapper, you're an entrepreneur, but it, it's you, your name, right? You're the only Ashley, that's you. It's your personality. It's you. You're unique. Um, I'm the only Isaac Mashman. I'm unique to me. Your personal brand is you and everybody who knows you. You know, it's your personality. What makes, makes you, you know, if, so, if you were to ask somebody, hey, describe me in five words or describe me in five sentences, uh, those people and everything that they describe you as would be your personal brand, what you're known as. And it's up to you to kind of market yourself and grow yourself to determine how many people you want to know you. Um, you know, you don't have to, to be the next Warren Buffett or Kim Kardashian to have a personal brand. You could have your personal brand, brand in your local town. You know, you could be the town baker. You could be the town, I, I don't know, just real estate agent. Or if you wanted to build up a brand as, you know, the go-to um, real estate agent that's well known across all social media. That's your personal brand. Um, and it's important, honestly, because it gives you the ability to have leverage in a lot of different areas in life. You know, a lot of people are like, you know, I don't want to be known. Uh, Grant Cardone, you know, I'm very particular with who I follow online just because there's so mm -hmm. many fake people. There's so many fake gurus and entrepreneurs. And I've been through and down that road. But, you know, that was kind of how I got started. I'm not going to lie. I got started kind of going down a stereotypical wannabe preneur, you know, flashy objects thing. And then I grew out of that. I evolved. I, you know, kind of grew into to what I'm doing today and what I'm pursuing. But Grant Cardone is one of the people who says, if I don't know you, I can't flow you. And that basically means if I don't know who you are, how am I supposed to buy from you? Yet if yeah. you ask these people who say that they don't want to be well known and you ask them what their issues are in life, a lot of them will mention finances. So if you if you don't want to be well known, yet you have a lack of finances, what is the solution to your problem? It's becoming well known. And that's why it, it's the same aspect of why are we on this car right now? 
you know, because I built my brand up, I built my personal brand up to where you were like, hey, you know, I would love for you to be on and thank you again for, for the opportunity. It's awesome. Um, no, thank you for your patience, bro. I can't do math. <laughs> it's all good. You know, like, we went through like three or four different time changes, but it's yeah. all good. we're on the car right now. Yes, um, yes. That's all that matters. Yeah. So, um, go ahead. Sorry. No, can, no, you continue. Finish. No, I, I was just going to say, you know, so I view it as, as the solution to your problems. The same thing as entrepreneurship. And that's why I really like the business that I'm in because I'm, I'm every single person has different problems, but at the core, personal branding could solve a lot of them. They can't solve family issues for the most part. They can't, it can't solve, you know, past trauma or things that go wrong in your life. But what it can solve is finances. It can solve, you know, the lack of, uh, let's say, relationships, the lack of connections, um, simply because building up your personal brand presents more opportunities because you have more leverage and you're in demand. And that's what I really, you know, love and resonate with. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Where, um, so did you ever see the movie Inglorious Bastards? That is the one movie I haven't gotten around to watching. I know everybody makes pop references and I feel so behind on it. Because y you say three, which is very German. No, Americans say three. You say three. I I've noticed that in your, in your videos and in, in your photos. Why do you do this? Are you saying three or are you saying what's up? Like, oh, when I do like this little like thing and yeah. like that, you know, okay, this is a point of vulnerability for me, I guess. Um, something I'm trying to do a little bit more of. Growing up, I was always very self-conscious. I haven't really, I haven't been in, in the whole creating content space lately. It's been more so just kind of getting some things with my own brand established and then I'm about to do a marketing push and do content. But um, I was very, very, very self-conscious growing up. I was bullied. Um, I was made fun of. And that's kind of part of the reason why I think I, I'm on this path to kind of, I, I have that side of me that is egotistical to where it's like, I want to, I want to show you if you made fun of me where I'm at, but not from a place of like, screw you, but more of a place of like, dude, like why, what was the point of making fun of me all these years? Like we could have been like, I could have brought you up, you know, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. And something that, you know, this also goes back to the lack of finances my teeth, I don't, I don't have good teeth genes. Like I don't, like I'm very self-conscious of my smile. You'll never see me smile in a video or, or, you know, a picture. Um, and that's something I'm working on, but at the same time, it's something where like, I got some dental work that I need to do. And so I'll do that almost as like a, I feel like I do it subconsciously as a reminder of like that self-conscious nature, um, to where I don't want people looking at my smile or looking at my face. It's one of those things that I'm overcoming about myself. You know, it's like my voice. I used to despise my voice before I had my podcast. I would listen to it and I would hate it. You know, it's the same reason as I used to, I used to hate Mashman. I hated my last name, like despised it. Well, the thing is, I don't want to get, you know, I, I'm fine with getting personal, but like, I don't know my biological father. I've never met him. Mm -hmm. And so I never really had, I only had negative things in association with the last name. And on top of that, again, kids would be like Smashman, Smashmouth. Like they would make all these dumb jokes uh -huh. and all these things about these my last are the name. Words. You know, looking back, I laugh. Um, but ne but as I got older and as I got into business and as I'm getting social media handles and I'm on Twitter and I'm on you know these different platforms, I'm like Isaac Mashman. Yes, I can get my handle, and I realize that that's like my greatest weapon because it's available, it's unique, and so I kind of learned to embrace it um, and really learn to live with it. You're, you're very handsome, though. You know that, right? I appreciate that. Yeah, you are. And I, I think that you have a very, like, calming voice. It's very, <laughs> like, it's, it's very, like, masculine but gentle. I don't know why people say that. But, hey, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's true. I don't, I don't, like, I don't like giving fake compliments because, you yeah, know, I, I believe in karma. I don't need any more bad karma right now in my life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How do you sell the ROI and not the product? Ah, referencing the podcast. Okay. Um, man, you are asking questions that a lot of people, <laughs> a, lot, well, a lot of people ask very basic questions and they don't do, uh, something I've noticed is some, some hosts do the research, they dig, uh, dig around a little bit, they pay a little bit more attention and other hosts are kind of very broad based and they're going to ask very cliche questions. Um, so selling the ROI is basically focusing on the return on investment, ROI's return on investment. It's just a business acronym. Um, so that's like, okay, let's say you pay $500 for a product. This is your return for this product or for the service. So if you buy, um, trying to think of an example, 
candle. I have a candle on my desk, fresh brew candle. Um, if I was to pay $10 for this candle, the return on investment I would get would be a good smelling candle, right? Let's say I'm going to, you know, for my own services, right? Personal branding. My, my services aren't like the cheapest. Like I, it's not like a $20 per hour type thing. Like you're talking up to a thousand dollars or more to work with me, uh, depending on what you need help with. And that can be steep for some people. Some people can see that and they, they, they only see the dollar amount and that can be off putting. They can be like, yo, so you mean to tell me to work with you? I got to pay $500 or for two sessions, I got to pay 250 a session. Like what the, whoa, whoa, that's steep. And that's, again, we're raised with that poverty, that scarcity mindset, no matter where you're from, as long as you're not from wealth, you're raised with that poverty mindset. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why the, there's like a, a lessening middle, middle wage, or uh, middle class America, whole nother rabbit trail. But selling the ROI is saying, okay, so yes, it's going to be $500 to work with me for two different sessions, but this is what you're getting from these sessions. This is what I am going to be able to do for you. And then that's when you can kind of go and attack the pain points. And what attacking the pain points would be, so let's say I'm working with a rapper and the rapper is coming to me because he needs help to build up his presence. <clears throat> and up until this point, he's only on SoundCloud. And he looks like a SoundCloud rapper. He looks like underground, but not like, he doesn't want to be underground, but he looks underground. He looks unprofessional, kind of that high school dropout. I'm gonna make music and smoke pot 24 seven, right? Yeah. Um, so he's coming to me and he's like, $500 is too steep. And that's when I would hit him and be like, okay, so you say that you want to be a billboard charting artist and you want to have millions of fans and you want to be taken serious and you don't want people around your town cracking jokes because you're an underground artist and you make music, right? And you're saying that $500 is too, too expensive for you to get the results of actually looking professional, actually knowing how to handle yourself, knowing how to market yourself, knowing how to actually get these results for your brand and you're saying that $500 is too steep. When was the last time you bought a pair of new shoes? You know, at PS5, I bet you probably just bought, you paid over $500 on top of the, all the games. That's selling the ROI. And on top of selling the ROI, you dive in and hit the pain points and that's how you have a close. That's how you have a sale. You know, so for me, going into a conversation, some people know my age, some people don't know my age. If you were to see this 20 year old kid asking for a thousand dollar contract, you'd be like, who are you? to go ahead and do this. And that's when you emphasize what you can do. And that, that, that's, that applies for a $20 product even, or a, a $10 product or a, you know, anything, you know, there's always going to be a return on something. Money is energy. That's all it is. Money is just, you're, you're getting an energy investment or an energy exchange. So the more, the more value you give, the more energy you give, the more return you get, the less, the less money you'll make. Hmm. Okay. 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 Who would you rather fight? Mike Tyson or Roy Jones Jr.? You know, I was, I'm too young to say that I ever watched them growing up, obviously. You know, Mike retired when I was five, six years old. But I watched the fight the other day. And based off of the fight, uh, if I didn't want to get my ass beat as bad, I would have to say Roy Jones. I didn't think his fighting was that spectacular. That's obviously easy for me to say, right? It's easy for me yes, to say. Yes, it's true. Yes, it's true. <laughs> but I'm like, Throw me in the ring with him. Okay, I think I might be all right. Um, I think having the honor of being knocked out by Mike not, might not be a bad idea, though. Just saying, like, just to say that, hey, I got my, knocked out by Mike Tyson. That would be an interesting YouTube video. Um, right. That's, funny. <laughs> that, that's a good question, though. It's funny. <laughs> well, um, what did you think of, um, is it Jake? It's Jake. Yeah, Maybe. Jake Paul and um, Nate Robinson. You know, I watched the replay, and I saw Twitter blown up. Um, I had that, I was kind of wanting Nate to win, but at the same time I wanted Jake to win. I was like, I was kind of un, undecided because I've never really liked Jake Paul, but I, I pay attention no to, Jake. well, I pay, that's the thing. That's part of his marketing though. He's not trying to be liked. He's trying to become successful, which yeah. is, he's, he's, it's same thing with six, nine. He's someone you pay attention for the marketing. You don't pay attention for who he is because he might not be the best personality. Um, but what was the question? Would I rather get like fight one of them, or what did I think about? Oh it? no, I, I was I was just asking your commentary on the on yeah. the knockout of um, Nate Robinson. I don't think Nate did enough training either. I think I don't. I think he kind of underestimated Jake and thought that Jake kind of was taking it like a stereotypical YouTuber and not as an actual professional. Like if you watch mm -hmm. Jake's commentary afterwards, Jake Jake literally says like I was taking this serious. Like I'm trying to make this my my secondary career. People might laugh at that. But I can see Jake going down and actually fighting some professional boxers down the line. I think Nate was going into this like, yo, 
I'm this, you know, all star. I'm tall as hell. Like I'm, I'm in shape. Like this is going to be a piece of cake. Um, yeah. And that wasn't. I think, I think Nate kind of let cockiness kind of get in his way. True. True. That's true. I didn't think about it like that. What are the stages of learning? Are Are you referring? Okay. Are you referencing the four stages of learning or just broad based stages of learning? The four stages of learning. Damn. Okay. <laughs> I mean, okay. No, I'm very impressed because you're asking questions that I want more people to ask me because it actually gives me a chance to have a conversation outside of stereotypes. Um, okay. <laughs> so the four stages of learning. This is something I learned from a virtual, I call them virtual mentors, right? We live in a, a, an amazing time to where you don't need um, to be face to face with somebody to get value. You know, the people listening to this podcast, listening back, they're going to be getting value from some, from two people they're not face to face with. They might come to meet us in the future. They might've already met us. They might be friends with us. Who knows? But we have the luxury of being in a world where we're interconnected. It's globalized. Like we're able to go to YouTube, search up one topic, get all the information, all the knowledge. That's what I was able to do with my business. I didn't go to college to learn what I learned. Um, and I was on a call the other day with a 19 year old student who's studying marketing and business. And he's like, man, you're talking about literally all the same stuff that we were learning right now. But the difference is I'm not paying thousands of dollars per semester to learn the information. I just kind of jumped into it. But the four stages of learning was something I learned from I'm trying to think of the specific person. This is one of the things that I learned in network marketing. Um, there's a character named Kevin Trudeau and he's a controversial figure just because he's one of those like in, like the television salesman and he actually went to prison for like a couple of years like he's in jail right now but what he taught is reinforced by the ideas of other mentors if you pay attention and you, you kind of have to read in between the lines um, and so the four stages of learning of learning you have unconscious and competent right you have the subconscious mind and you have the conscious mind the subconscious mind is actually 30,000 times, that's one of the numbers I heard, 30,000 times more powerful than the conscious mind. You, you've blinked a thousand times. You haven't thought about blinking. You've breathed, you might've thought about breathing once, right? Otherwise you're just breathing naturally. That is controlled by the subconscious mind. The conscious mind would, what question are you going to ask next? What, you know, what are you going to do immediately after this call? You know, those kind of things are conscious decisions versus subconscious mind doing all the work for you. So unconscious incompetent is you don't know that you don't know, right? Competence is you're able to do a task or you're not able to do the task. You're good or you're bad at it. Um, and so unconscious incompetent is you don't know that you don't know. Then you have cautious incompetent which basically means that you know that you don't know. And that's when you can kind of take the time to strengthen yourself and take the time to learn how to become competent. And then you have conscious competent, which is you know that you know, right? You, you know that you're doing something, so you're becoming better at it. So let's say podcasting, right? You know, like, okay, immediately, there's so many different examples that I could go down. But for this example, Let's say you're podcasting and you've already, you know, you're doing podcasting for a little bit of time. Um, you're still consciously thinking about the podcast and asking questions and stuff like that. But there, there becomes a stage which is called unconscious competence, which is it's just second nature. It's like you, mm -hmm. you, you've learned how to do it. So you're a natural at podcasting. The questions and the conversation flows naturally or you're driving a car. Right. When you first drove a car, you thought that you were going to crash it. You thought that you, you didn't know what you were doing. And then now you're able to go and drive your car, um, eat McDonald's on, at the same time and listen to a podcast or, you know, that, that those are the four stages of learning. It's been a minute since someone has asked me to actually explain that. So that's why I'm a little rusty. But as one of those things that you have to continuously study, um, it's, it's like learning a language. If you don't learn the language, it gets, you know, less and less in your mind. And that's why it's important to be a student always and continuously grow. True, true, true. Wow, that was, I'm so going to, I can't wait to rewatch re this. I'm still going to take notes. Another selfish question. <laughs> me with it. Um, why should we, uh, I don't know what I want to ask. Can I ask two more questions? Go for it. I'm not, on, okay, I, I okay. don't care about the time. It's fine. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, what's the line between getting followers and being manipulative? 
it depends on your intention. I think that that's honestly what it is. Um, and this is a, this is something that I really stand by because in personal branding, it's, I could go online right now. I could search up buy followers online and I could get a hundred thousand followers to my Instagram account tomorrow, literally. Yeah. Um, and that's morally and ethically wrong, you know, but in my opinion, right. Morals and ethics, there's no like definitive definition, but in my opinion, that's morally and ethically wrong because you're trying to present yourself as somebody you're not, you're trying to change the psychology of the people and how they view you. We live in a society where if you go up to somebody and you're talking to them, they could have a fantastic personality. And then the moment you see their Instagram and they have a million followers or a hundred thousand followers, you're going to subconsciously view them a little bit differently because of the number yeah. associated with their name. It's not, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing great about it. It's kind of, it, that's a neutral ground, but we live in a society that's so number based. That's why we view the rich differently, right? You view rich people a little bit differently, whether good or bad because of a dollar amount, because of a digit, because of a number, a fantasy mm -hmm. number. Um, and so if you're going and buying followers or if you're trying to present yourself as somebody you're not, that is something that I would consider manipulative. Now, getting followers and actually doing the work to brand yourself to show that you're somebody who's growing. See, I've never said that this Rolls Royce is mine. You could go to my page and you could see a picture of me sitting behind a Rolls Royce. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a handshot as a photo of the steering wheel. If you read mm -hmm. the caption, you say that this is not my Rolls Royce yet. You go to another person's page, they're going to take the same exact photo except they're going to try to act as if that Rolls Royce is theirs, like right now. And it's not. It's the whole fake rented Lamborghini bullshit you see online. Um, and that is manipulative. But actually showing and, and taking people along the process of, hey, this is me and my personality. This is when your personality does more for your personal brand than your actual business. Because I built up a personal brand when I didn't even have a business going. When I was figuring things out, it was trial and error. And I was just building up a brand based around my name. I would follow people, I would connect with them, I would have conversations, and I had people, and I have people who've been following me since I was literally that kid in high school who didn't know what I was doing, who had no experience whatsoever before my first business trip, before I even graduated. But they were following me because of my personality. And that also goes into another word of a value for people who are growing up their brands of, you're building up a, a cult-like following. Cult can be a negative word, but it's, it's culture. You're building up a culture based around you and that's your community is, yeah. So you're building up that culture based around you, your personality, your community. That's why some people, if you go to some YouTubers pages and you read the comments, they're toxic. You go to other YouTubers and their community is great and they're supportive, right? You know, mm -hmm. if, you go, if you go to 6 Nines comment page right now, I use him because he's like, he's a really great example to use because he's like that, like when you stub your toe, like he, he's just there, he's there. But you go to his comment section, it's toxic. You go to somebody like Bob, are you familiar with Bob, Bob Proctor? That sounds familiar. You need, you need to go ahead and look into him because I can imagine you're probably somebody who really takes the law of attraction seriously. Um, you need to go study Bob Proctor. Uh, but you go to his page or you go to Gary Vaynerchuk's page or you go to Oprah Winfrey's page or something like that you're going to see a change in that dynamic of the comment section because they have that culture and they have that, like it's part of who they are. I love that. I love that. Okay. So why should we send voice messages when communicating in our DMS? Because it, okay. This goes back to the basic principles of, of a human relationship. And you know, you, in the terms of sales, you have cold, warm, and hot. A cold lead is someone who doesn't know you. It's the first interaction. A warm is somebody who you know. They might be beginning to know you and they don't necessarily trust you 100%. A hot prospect or a hot lead is somebody who knows, likes, trusts you and is going to buy from you without a lot of, the, a lot of issues. Um, and so when you're talking to somebody for the first time, all they know is your profile picture. They might see your face and they see your name. If you're doing things right and you have the profile picture and the name correctly to where they're able to figure out who you are. Aside from mm -hmm. that, they don't know what you sound like. They don't know if that's actually you on your profile. They don't know where you're from. They don't know anything like that. And so if you're able to go and increase the amount of human emotions or human senses that you're able to appeal to, that is the golden basically the, the golden nugget, the golden ticket of like, hey, if I, let's say I, I don't know who you are 
and I'm, I, I come across you, let's say we're meeting for the first time, I follow you on social media, you're going to be like, who's Isaac Mashman? Why is he following me? Then I go in, I message you and I'm like, I send you a text message first. I'm like, hey, Ashley. And then I send you a voice message. And I'm like, yo, I know that this is coming out of the blue. You don't know me. You don't know who I am. None of that. I just came across your profile. Seems like you got, you know, a lot of stuff going for you. I'm looking to expand my network and actually communicate with some, some like-minded individuals. Uh, you know, yo, let's hop on a call sometime. You're going to be more likely to follow me back to actually want to continue that conversation, especially if you go into it and send a voice message with emotion. There's a difference between just sending a voice message and being like, hey, Ashley, uh, cool page, man, or cool, pa cool, pre cool page, bro. You know, um, I can't even, I can't even mimic that, you know, but you have to control your emotion in the voice message and actually show that you're a person, show your personality, show, show some emotion to it. And then that person's going to kind of not, now they can not only see your text messages or see your face, see your name, but now they're actually able to hear your voice appealing to more. It's, it's all, and that appeals to the subconscious mind of the psychology of it and so on and so You're forth. You're very smart. I appreciate that. You, you are very, very, very intelligent. Have you always been like this? I don't know how to answer that. I mean, sorry, sorry, that was, that's, that's not one of the questions I wrote down. Sorry. No, 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 it's, it's not that I don't want to answer that, but I'm like, I mean, I've always been, a lot of school came, like, I'm very book smart, like, it's easy for me to learn. Some subjects are easier than others, but I just, I'm always trying to, I'm always, I'm very observant, like, and I'll pay attention to the mi most minute details. And that's why I really enjoy, and I'm also very OCD, like, I'm, I'm like, even if it comes to thought loops, like I can think about something, I will stay thinking about it. Or I'll notice something. I'll notice that like the painting on the walls off. Like if you look at this, this painting's level, you know, it's not, it's not crooked, but that attention to detail has helped me in business. And it also helps me when it comes to learning because I want to actually be able to digest the information. It's one thing to read a book, like it's a textbook. And it's another thing to actually read the book to learn the contents of the book. That's why Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. I'm on the third time reading it. You know, I'm not trying to skim read a book. I'm trying to actually digest it, learn it, and apply it. Um, and a lot of what I'm talking to you about, I've already taught other people. And being able to teach is a fantastic way to actually learn the information, and actually cement it into your mind to where you reach the level of unconscious competence. So. So where can we learn from you? Where can we stalk you, stalk you, follow you, all that fun stuff? Yeah, well, you can find me literally everywhere at Isaac Mashman. Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, um, Pinterest, Quora, like the list goes on like that. That's the business I'm in. So I got to make sure I'm everywhere. Uh, but you can also listen to my podcast, Chase a Vision with Isaac Mashman, available on all platforms. Go to my website, IsaacMashman.com. And you can kind of find all the links from there. Um, so, yeah. Thank you again for, okay. for this interview. And, and no, you've thank, done your thank research. you for your patience, bro. And final hey. questions, then I'm going to let you go have dinner. Yeah, it's, it's late over there. Um, it's, all, it's all good. <laughs> Ask away. So... Let's say that there's a law passed tomorrow that they're shutting down the internet for the next year. Mm -hmm. What are you gonna do? Hmm. Okay, so I would go into my apocalyptic planner mode. I, I hate to say it, I, I would go into that mode. There's a reason why I like The Walking Dead. That's my number one t television what? show. Yeah, so oh, I've, I I've, I've, I've literally watched every single episode. I've watched the new series, like all that stuff. Um, I would, the, the next steps for me would f first get everything in line here to where I have an emergency bag. That's something I'm working on even without them shutting down the internet. Like I want to make sure I have batteries, food, purification tablets, like all that other stuff. I, I was in Boy Scouts for eight years. I, I love nature. I love that like survivalist aspect of me. Um, and then aside from that, I would go ahead and, and my next transition be, okay, well, obviously r running an internet business isn't the move right now. I can't make money doing that traditional thing, but personal branding at its core is applicable on and offline. Most people only focus on offline or they only focus online. If you're able to focus online personal branding and offline personal branding and become well-known locally with people next to you and around you and then become well-known on the internet, that's how you really achieve success. But I would go and build up my personal brand offline in my local community, go down to city hall. I would go ahead and start networking with people, go to coffee shops, all those different things just to kind of get the word around town spreading about who I am. And then from that, more opportunities would come look into real estate, probably go and do some flipping on Craigslist. Not, well, Craigslist wouldn't be existent. 
um, I would I would find a way. So that's that's probably what I would do. That's an interesting question. I'm gonna think about that. <laughs> Well, I really, really appreciate, once again, your patience, mm -hmm. and I really appreciate you taking out the time to, to chat with us. I think from looking at the comments, you gave so much valuable advice, and I know that your time is very, very costly, but I really hope that you know that you're helping someone. My, my goal right now in life, in life is just to help one person a day, and I hope out of these people who are watching, you helped at least one. Yeah, look, how many people are watching right now, by the way, because it, it sh shows one, because I disconnected my phone before I joined, so it's not showing. I don't see any comments Oh, you right can't now. see? I don't see any comments. It was a glitch or something. Oh, really? Oh, my yeah. God. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's I all good. Have, I should have been reading them off to you. <laughs> no, no. But in conclusion, everyone loves you. Okay. <laughs> You're probably going to get it. spammed like crazy after this, which is a good thing. Well, so, hey, I appreciate <laughs> that. Yeah. No, I appreciate you. And, and happy Christmas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I never. I don't want to offend anyone. I don't. <laughs> yeah. I know you gotta watch what you say. It's 2020, but hey, no. Nah, right. It's, it's Christmas. We got a Christmas tree in there. You know, nah. It's good. There's a reason why I knew um, the. There, there's a reason why I knew Jesus Joseph Carpenter. So don't don't worry about that. Your your sister is here. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Let me, let me guess. A little. <laughs> All right, well, Isaac, I really appreciate okay. your time. We'll, we'll be in contact, okay? Okay, sounds good. All right, bye. All right thanks, Ashley. Thank you.